Hey, what's up, you guys? Hope the Grim here. And today we got my top 10 favorite action figures of 2021. Now, I chose not to just do Marvel Legends because I do have some Transformers on this list. And honestly, to me, this year was not as strong for Marvel Legends as I thought it would be. And kicking things off, I got a few honorable mentions. Uh, first off, the Iron Man and Thanos 2 pack. Those are two figures that I really wanted. I did not get the original versions because the, the Thanos is a builder figure and I did not feel like I'm playing that Thanos because I did not want most of those figures. And I missed out on the Iron Man Mark 85, so I'm glad Hasbro gave us a chance to get both of those figures in one pack. And then I also have. Uh, I, I got. I got the was uh, yeah the uh, Transformers War for Cybertron Dinobot. Now I do have a problem with my copy because that one has a bit of a floppy on uh, well the right flap on the on his right thigh in Dino mode will not click properly. So that is why he just gets a honorable mention. Still a really good figure. I think this is the best uh, Dinobot figure you can get for your budget. And I do wish it came with. A bit more paint and then uh, after that I have the Marvel Legends Winter Soldier and the Marvel Legends Foul Cap figure from the Disney Plus wave I love both of those figures oh and the Zemo too I, I love all three of those figures I thoroughly enjoyed Falcon and the Winter Soldier but to me um, having Foul Cap's wings as the building figure just did not work for me. I mean, Vulture is justifiable because those wings are massive and you get a huge amount of articulation. But Sam's wings, you, they're pretty much the same size as the uh, Civil War slash Infinity War Falcon wings. Except the, um, the Falcon's wings are, have articulation. I understand that there was not a huge character that... Hasbro could use as the build a figure, but maybe a slightly larger character. And I'm just going off the top of my head here. How about George Batroc? I would love to get a GSP figure in my collection. So those are the honorable mentions, and let's get on to the top 10 list. Coming at the number 10 spot, we have the Marvel Legends Icarus from the Eternal Wave. Now, this was not a bad wave per se. I mean, these were all movie figures, so Hasbro had to shell out a lot of money on them, but they could have done a lot better. They could have given him a laser effect, and the paint on the back could have been... Like, what is this? I mean, the front looks good, but you don't just paint a figure um, halfway through. 25% the way a quarter of the way through and not paint the rest either paint the whole back or just do not give us paint at all this looks very awkward and what really but I really like the dark blue the dark metallic blue on this guy and you get the double joint knees and elbows the whole package now the reason why he's in my top 10 he's in uh, he's at the number 10 spot and not I don't know higher spot and even though I really wanted a Richard Madden figure is because I have a problem with the dumbbell joint mine just keeps popping off when I want to swap heads with the regular heads and the fact that I have you uh, use a pair of pliers pliers to swap heads really bugs me but I still love the detail that they put into this guy and I had to include at least one Eternals figure in my top 10 list. Coming in at the number 9 spot, we have the Marvel Legends Toys R Us exclusive Dina. Yeah, I lied. Uh, out of all the Marvel Legends Eternals figures that Hasbro has produced, this is by far my favorite one. I mean, the head looks like Angelina Jolie, just tone down the cheeks a little bit because. It makes her face look a little fat, but other than that, um, 
there's no, first of all, there, there's no, like, uh, paint in the sculpted line, so it makes, um, it makes the figure look less awkward in the back compared to the other Eternals figures, and she comes with way more accessories than the other Eternals. Granted, these are not screen accurate, but how could Hasbro really produce those screen accurate effects when it really just, uh, beams of light? Um, and so I did not mind that, and I just love the interchangeable hands and these swords that really do the that represent the uh, that represent her powers. Okay, this one she can't really hold her, her accessory well on this hand, but that's a minor gripe of mine. I I do like her, her Icarus, even though I like the uh, coloring on Icarus a lot more because of this and, and really the biggest gripe I have with her is the lack of knee joint I'm not sorry not, lack of knee what is that this looks so awkward but because she has these knee high boots I'm willing to overlook that in while I'm posing her and so that is why she is at the number 9 spot. At the number 8 spot we have this guy, the Infinity Saga, Captain America, he is designed from Infinity War. I think this is a much better figure than the initial Infinity War version. First of all, the head looks a lot like Chris Evans. Granted, I feel like he still looks a bit like Mark, a bit more like Mark Stone, and these are screen accurate shields right here we have like two different versions one is splayed open one is closed and you get the new pinless arms chris evans um he's one of my favorite actors i think he's really hot the us human non routine movie and hasbro did a pretty good job at um retooling this figure and giving him two new faces like you get the angry head skull and of course the shield but yeah um he was a bit hard for me to track actually when he was first announced as a wall exclusive I'm like, oh god I'm not a exclusive because those are really hard to find on mr ajak oh by the way i did not get ajak do not worry when salma high gave her disapproval of that figure i said yeah fuck that i am not getting ajak and I, th having this in hand makes me really glad I passed up on the initial f uh, version from the Thanos build a figure wave because um, I would rather spend 40 bucks on a new improved and retooled version than the, than the initial like 30, 35 bucks for that one since I know th since that one has a face that's like, Ugh. yeah, that's why. Infinity War Cap makes the number 8th spot. At the number 7th spot, we have my favorite superhero to have his movie released in theaters this year, and that is Shang-Chi. Oh my god. I find There's finally a superhero that celebrates the same uh, cultures as I do. And the fact of the matter is... um. He is a, he's a Chinese, he, well, I, he is Asian American, and he's like struggling to find his, I, does, he's struggling with um, his parents' culture, both from his mother and his father's side, and his American identity, because, and that fits me, because I'm Chinese Canadian, I'm, Hong, I'm Hong Kong or Canadian, and I've been struggling with my parents' uh, Chinese traditions, and some, and I always have to be reminded of when they take place, or when, um, or, and what I have to do and what I have to say. And the movie was very emotional for me. I, I thoroughly liked Shang Chi's story arc from refusing his parents' culture and just going with his American identity to finding a balance between all three of them. And I think, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of Simu Liu 
as Shang-Chi in the future. And yes, this bow staff is, I feel like it, he, it is a bit too long and I wish it came with fists. Like what kind of superhero figure does not come with fists unless you're saber too, you know? And you can clearly see here with these uh, pinless joints that it really is a, you can see the pin that's visible. And they just um, covered it up. Still, a really good sculpted figure by Hasbro. And really well done execution of the character by Marvel themselves. And I'm I'm seriously going to uh, be one of the first ones to see Shang-Chi 2 when it comes out in theaters. At the number 6 spot, we have a tie. I gave it 2. The Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy, Kingdom Rhinox, and his leader, the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy, Kingdom Optimus Primal. So, this marked the first year I bought a non Bayformers for my collection. And for me, it had to be Rhinox because I played using Rhinox in Transformers Forge to fight for a bit, and he was just one of my favorite, he was by far one of my most reliable characters, and that's why I desperately wanted him in 6 inch form. And if I had to break the rule for one character, it had to be for Rhinox. Now, I do um, have a lot of complaints with this guy, basically the same ones that people have with him. Me, So, uh... The horrible breakable legs that in, when transforming to beast mode that is a huge annoyance, and the the mini Gatling guns these are supposed to be a bit a lot larger, and I saw the Beast Wars cartoon. Yeah, I uh, I liked Rhinox so much, and and it's part of my field site to look at movie adaptations, and since they are doing Rise of the Beast, and they did. Then they adapted Beast Wars for the War for Cybertron trilogy. I had to watch um, Beast Wars to see to better understand the characters and see how they change them. And I thought Rhinox was one of the best characters, uh, second to Dinobot, really. And uh, Beast Wars, he was a bit more bland, like all, most of the other Beast Wars characters in. Kingdom, except for uh, Predacon Megatron, because Predacon Megatron was beyond bland. He was bad. But to me, this is my uh, Richard Newman voiced Rhinox right here. And I do like that he has butterfly joints. Uh, yes, they are part of the transformation, but it still um, really helps with the posability. But I do not like the uh, awkward joints right here. So when you're posing him, you gotta make sure you don't really. Uh, show the empty joints and then we have Optimus Primal okay I was one of those people like Optimus Prime transforming to Gorilla I was not on board with this when I was a kid and that was the reason why I did not watch Beast Wars until the until the War for Cybertron trilogy and and I did end up falling in love with Optimus Primal and ha what Hasbro did with this piece is to compensate for the uh, size of the Voyager class, because I think Optimus Prime was a little shorter than Rhinox and Dinobot. What they did was give him a lot better articulation. First of all, you have articulated hands, okay? And then you have the shoulder cannons here. If Hasbro had done him differently, I'm pretty sure that for budget reasons, they would not have the shoulder cannons. They have, um, they ha well, they have the toe articulation. I have not seen this in Transformers figure in a while, well, the Bayformers figures anyway. And he has double jointed knees and a bit of a butterfly joint. They nailed the lightness on this character. Sorry, one of the swords fell. 
And I do feel like the C they ripped this guy off from the TV show and um, fine tuned him to, towards how they they basically I feel like they ripped this character from Beast Wars and they fine tuned him uh, to fit the modern era. And this is my Gary Chalk uh, Optimus Primal right here. So yeah, I had to put these two guys in um, my top 10 action figures of 2021 and number six are like the right spot and you'll see there is another transformers on this list and the number five spot i have the trend the marvel legends infinity saga thor figure oh boy i'm so happy with this piece um first of all I love that Hasbro gave us this version of Thor, and, and nothing is reused from the bro Thor mold. Obviously, I thought maybe the head sculpt was, but nope, completely new head sculpt. Uh, Brian, uh, Stormbreaker, a uh, screen accurate Stormbreaker like the bro Thor one. Well, it's the same one as the bro Thor one, but with translucent plastic. Although I really wish he could grip this figure a lot better, and a new. Mjolnir. He's not holding Mjolnir because I gave that Mjolnir to Worthy Cap. And then you have two of these lightning effects that came with the what is it? The Infinity War Thor. And I think all around Hasbro uh, nailed the belly of this guy the, and the sculpt. You know, like the cape does not really hinder um, his articulation or his posability like my grip with other uh, action like my grab with other capes and uh yeah sorry i'm just a little tired my work schedule has been hectic and you get these uh you get these interchangeable hands so you can have them hold me on there like this and then wrap one lightning effect around his arms so that you can have him shoot the lightning at Thanos or have him combine the lightning with Stormbreaker. And all so all and this fits perfectly with my endgame display. This uh, I would rather have him than the Bro Thor build a figure. Because that Bro Thor fig build a figure sucks. At the number four spot I have the Transformer Studio series Dino. I uh, I love this guy. This is my sealed copy. Um, I have the well, the one I open is up on my Dark of the Moon display, and it took ten years, okay, for licensing reasons. But we finally got an official Dino released by Hasbro, and for the longest time, this Japanese movie advanced version was my Dino. This is the um, this is a retool and repaint of the sideways mold from Revenge of the Fallen with a somewhat accurate head. Yeah, somewhat accurate. And I, I really like this guy. I, I love this. I like this mold a lot, but the blades just would not stick well. And so when Hasbro released this official version of Dino... I gladly jump ship, and <clears throat> this is the the car for obvious reasons could not be replicated um, to the exact measurements of um, the movie. But the CG, the robot mode looks exactly like how Dino looked in Transformers: Dark of the Moon. But I have a problem with this, and the image here shows the blades um, like this, but really. The blades need to be facing outward, not inward. So yeah, this is why Dino makes my number. At the number three spot, I have the Transformers Studio Series Starscream. Yeah, I lie. Okay, I just finished watching the Bumblebee movie. I thought it was pretty good. And first of all, I am still more biased towards the tattooed version of Starscream. And I really wish I had the studio series version um instead i have the regular version without the tattoos and i want i i would swap 
my Studio Series star screen without the tattoos for the one with the tattoos. I, I'm, I think the color looks better, and um, I think it looks overall a lot more alien-like um, in the tone of the Michael Bay movies. And but in this one, this version of Starscream, I still like. He only appeared as an extra in the movie, and I am not a fan of the G1 designs. Okay, I prefer the Bayformers designs, and I think they look more alien, they look more realistic than what the uh, G1 designs look like. Those G1 designs look clunky, and they look like they don't look like alien robots. They just look like um yeah, they just look like robots. I know it sounds stupid for me to say, but that's just how I feel. Travis Knight has managed to take a very take those um, blocky designs from the G1 verse. Like you got admit it, you guys only like those designs because of nostalgia crap. Okay, that's it. And they he was able to take the that uh, blocky G1 design and blend it in with the more alien organic like. Uh, versions of the design of Bay aesthetics of the Bayverse, with well, the live action movies anyway. Now is no longer cons he's this version is no longer considered part of the Bayverse, and they gave us a, really a tremendous um, adaptation of Starscream. It is very evocative of the it's in the G1 colors. It is evocative of the G1 colors, but you see that. He has these shoulders. I don't have a G1 star suit. I'm sorry if I'm, if it sounds like I'm babbling. Okay, and I never will own a G1 star suit because I hate G1. He comes with he comes with a gun. Although I again I still prefer the uh, missile launcher that the Baver star scream comes with. And had this guy appeared, um, in had it appeared more. In the Bumblebee movie, and in speaking lines, I would have liked him a lot more. But I still think this is a pretty cool uh, version of Starscream. Again, and like I said, the tattoos version is my favorite. I am sorry, but the only uh, Bayverse design that I thought looked worse than their G1 design was Q slash Wheeljack. Cause like, I could never tell that was Q. I mean, sorry, Wheeljack. I'm like, wait, that's Wheeljack? And I'm looking forward to that Wheeljack figure from the Studio Series. At the number two spot, I gotta give it to my girl, Lizzie Olsen. Now, I do not care about the Scarlet Witch at all. In the, well, in the comics, anyway, but I love it, Lizzie's take on Wanda, uh, portraying her as um, somewhat of a mentally disturbed a uh, person, I wouldn't say me mentally disturbed, uh, dis person, person, uh, mentally, mental disabilities, because I do have a mental disability, and I was able to relate to Wanda, and I just love that this face nails my girl's likeness, and we get to see her in this beautiful dress, and the beautiful red hair. Uh, the skirt piece really hinders the articulation a bit, but I'm not going to take off points for that because we have a beautiful, gorgeous Lizzie Olsen head sculpt. At the number one spot, and for the t my favorite Marvel Legend of the year, and this might shock a lot of you guys, it is, and I gotta give it to, Lunchy White. I am all about uh, Asian representation, and the fact that Tony Leung like legendary Hong Kong actor Tony Leung decided to make Shang Chi in the Legend of the Ten Rings his Hollywood debut is just just really hits it for me having a Hong Kong I mean a fellow Hong Konger be in a Marvel movie and this version of uh, the Mandarin is a lot better than the comic version since this one he's more so, he's more of an anti-villain and well, you know his backstory, like, he lost his wife, he found, he, after he got the Ten Rings, he wanted mortality, he wanted wealth, um, so he saw Talos, uh, treasure, but he ended up falling in love with, I think it was Ying Li, 
Ying Lei, and after he fell in love with her, they had kids. But then when Ying Lei died, he was he returned to his criminal ways out of sorrow and despair. And I like the uh, Hongar bands here, the Ten Rings. My gripe with this guy was really the uh, lack of pinless joints. I mean, they could have done pinless joints. I think pinless joints would have been a lot better so that they would not have to do this awkward cut on the on the band on the top band. And I did not like the bronze effect, of the bronze color that they gave these rings. And since they appeared like more like veins than um, rings, so I took a little a bit of blue paint and a toothpick and I painted them blue for the glowing effect. And yes, this is based on the concept art of uh, Lang Chi Wai as Shu Wan Wu, but I I don't care. I I'm just really happy that I got a fellow Hong Kong actor in action figure form with a face that looks the nails his likeness. And the uh, Shu Wan Wu is my favorite uh, villain in the MCU. Period. Before I had I, it was Killmonger, but Lang Chi Wai is a lot more relatable for me, and and I love the design because Killmonger he was more like the final design was just an evil Black Panther that did not stand out for me, but this one is unique compared to Shang Chi's, and I love the fight sequences that he that Lang Chi Wai does with his ten rings. In the movie, some of the best and most well choreographed fighting I've um, in a Marvel movie, and because of all of that, and again having a fellow Hong Kong actor in plastic form, I give Lang Chi Wai what I yet composition. Hi, my Jai Chong, Hai Ngo Yi Lin Yi Yat, God Jai Chong was a good one guy, and that is why I give Lang Chi Wai that number one position in my top 10 list of action figures of 2021 thank you guys for watching like and subscribe like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time